Welcome to the CoinGecko podcast. For today's episode, we have the honor of welcoming Jordan Lau, founder of Meme Project. Meme Project is an experimental protocol at the intersection of DeFi and NFTs. And a little bit more about Jordan. Jordan also serves as the DeFi product lead at Consensus, leading the team building DeFi score and other pro- projects. Prior to joining Consensus, Jordan ran the product team at Toddler, a DEX liquidity network. He is passionate about bringing usability to Web3. Welcome to the CoinGecko podcast, Jordan. Hi, thanks for having me. Great to be here. Thanks a lot. Yeah, uh, big fan of Meme. Uh, been in the Citadel in the early days as well. Um, so for the benefit of the CoinGecko audience, right? So um, let's talk about the history of Meme. Maybe can you share with us a little bit about how this whole project got started and, and, and how we got to where we are today? Yeah, how much time do you have? It's a, it's a long story. Uh, no, it's it's a fun one. I'll give you the the abridged version. So yeah, I mean you were you were there in the early days, so you could actually tell some of this story. Um, man, it was crazy, right? Like, if if we go way back, um, it all started from a tweet. It sounds sounds silly to say, but uh, I had posted a tweet um, where just kind of poking fun at like some DeFi dev work and. DeFi development practices and just like the degen nature of some of this stuff, test and prod. And I just posted a, a joke on Twitter and I thought it would kind of, you know, get some likes and retweets, but it turned it turned into something that just kind of spun out of control, took off virally. And I decided to just create a telegram channel just for people to kind of jump in and have a laugh. Right. But uh, people had people in this community had a different idea and um, it was just weird combination of like the right type of people. Someone said, Hey, what should we do? Should we go build this product? No, let's, uh, let's create a token first. Uh, A bunch of people are pouring in, people were sharing the link and it was like, Hey, let's create a token. Let's create the meme token. And then um, it just, when the span of hours, this was like a Friday night, I'm in the, it's the middle of my night and I'm just like, I, I kind of birthed this thing, but I was sitting back watching it happen and watching people come in and wonder what's going on. And like at the point at the time there was like, there was nothing here. It was just a meme token, right? It was just, you know, we kept throwing the idea around. Could we be like the Doge for DeFi, the Doge coin for 2020? Uh, and there was nothing, there was no product. There was no team. It was just, Hey, there's a token and we're just having some fun people in the community. Um, but it started to get into this weird, like potentially like maybe scammy territory. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know, my name's attached to it. My name's attached to consensus. Like I want to make sure that this is all above board. So it was like, you know what? The meme token for DeFi should be composable, right? It should be a Lego brick, a money Lego brick. So we should actually do something with this. I'm a DeFi product guy, like you had mentioned in the intro. I work for consensus by day, building DeFi products. So it was like, hey, we could actually do something here. So there were a couple of engineers in the early community and we said, hey, let's, this is kind of crazy. This is kind of weird position, but let's go build something for fun. So it was almost like this hackathon thing. And that kind of turned into the real product that that you see today. Mm -hmm. But in the early days, it was very wild, man. It was, Mm -hmm. uh, the token was just kind of an afterthought and people kept sharing it and the price is very volatile Mm -hmm. and at the time there was nothing there i was telling people don't buy don't buy meme yeah that's where that came from so it was a wild ride man and it was great to have you there and members of your team because we were listed on binance or we were listed on coin coin gecko right away so it was great to uh kind of kick off that way but yeah man what a wild ride so so i'm just curious right so you start out with a tweet right where it was kind of tweet say that um it's like a point and click website to kind of deploy your DeFi project in one and then and then and then after that you then you set up a telegram community and then a bunch of people come by and then did you deploy the contract for the token or some people in a community deployed the contract and then you kind of, kind of like and I mean and as you said I want one of my questions early on I, I want uh, I actually thought of asking you this like how do you know to trust this random group of strangers online because like your names obviously most attached to it and you're the most visible member of the community so I mean, if a group of scammers come by and, and, and use this thing to kind of make a scam project out of it, you will be the one facing most of the consequences instead of the rest. So how do you, like, at what point you say like, hey, let's kind of, you know, I can trust these guys and let's go ahead and do this, do it. 
Yeah, no, you're right. There were there were a few of us, a couple of us that had their real names or their like online identity that they used elsewhere. Uh, for the most part, many others were anonymous, um, including a lot of the other core kind of influential or people core to the to the project. Yeah, I didn't create the tokens. Someone else in the community did. Um, I didn't create the Citadel. Someone else in the community did. And, it, and, and I wasn't creating the memes in the early days, right? People were just said, oh, I'll go, I'll go do this, I'll go do that. And yeah, it was a free for all. It was, it was crazy. And there were times where I'm like, if this heads into spammy pump and dump territory, I gotta get out. Yep. So it was this situation where I'm like, do I engage or do I hang back? What do I do? Uh, ultimately, like the dumpers had dumped, right? There are some famous people that, that were part of the original airdrop that dumped right away some famous people meaning in crypto Twitter. Uh, and it, it was still kind of like, well, I'm not, I'm not going to dump. I should stick through this. It was kind of my thing. I should at least play this out. But then in the back of my mind, like if this goes into a dangerous territory, just be open and honest and be like, I didn't plan for this. I'm going to be, you know, I reached out to the legal team at consensus, just letting everybody know, make sure we're all on the same page. If, if something happens out of control and this becomes an issue, uh, like that wasn't my intention. I tried to be open on Twitter. I was telling people, you know, this was satire, just in case that this went in the wrong direction. Because you're right, the community could have taken it in the wrong, wrong people could have driven it in the wrong direction. Uh, but after kind of things settled down the next day, uh, this all happened so fast. It's like the next day, uh, what, what, what do we do with this thing? Um, it seemed like the bad actors had moved on, right? They, they maybe sold at the local top, right, at the, for, the, for that day. And then things were like, okay, now what? The dust is settled. Um, and then I decided to kind of engage a little bit more and figure mm -hmm. out, all right, we've got an interesting thing on our hands. We've got a meme, we've got a community. We just don't have, a, we've got a token. We just don't have a product. And that's kind of when I stepped up and uh, started working with the developers to build something. But yeah, it was, it was uh, just a weird situation where it could have totally gone a different direction. Yeah. Really. I would be worried myself if this, if I was in your situation, I would like, do I continue or do I step back? Because like, I mean, both were equal chances of happening. Yeah. And, and, and I guess I suppose like the, the, that's how the, the name of the website came about, right? Like don't buy meme.com because like you tell everybody don't buy this, this meme, this meme token because like there's no value to it. I guess that's how did you did you buy the domain and did you deploy? I remember the early days. It was sort of like a domain and it was a Notion page with some very simple website, uh, text and some images. Like, were you the one behind it or someone else did yeah, that? Yeah. So I built that original Notion page, uh, and that was just the quickest way to get content on a website, right? I, I bought the domain name, pointed it to a Notion page, made it public put some text and images on there. Uh, that was before we had anything. This was the first night mm -hmm. um, and into the second day. And, and yeah, it was like, we don't really know what's going on here. The public seems to be really interested. We have a token that's trading. And at, at that point it was, it was up to like a million, million mm -hmm. and a half, $2 million <laughs> in market cap before we even had a product. It was mm -hmm. pretty crazy. And I'm like, all right, so I'm just gonna build this quick site and put up some information, direct people to the Telegram group, just kind of stoke the fire here. Uh, but at the same time, it was like, guys, this is crazy. Like we're, we don't have anything to show. There's no team, there's no product yet. We're not sure what we're gonna build. Um, it's probably a bad investment. You probably shouldn't buy it. And then it was like light bulb, don't buy meme. That's a meme in itself, right? Hashtag don't buy meme. And then I quickly went and registered don'tbuymeme.com. And that's kind of been our thing all along. Mm -hmm. And literally since the second day uh, where we've been telling people not to buy. Mm -hmm. And that's just some of the, the fun that we've had. And it's interesting seeing how that like sarcasm plays in different international audiences, like mm -hmm. people from certain parts of the country, especially English isn't their first language. They're very confused when they see that. They're, they think we're, uh, you know, they, they, they think that they sh they're breaking the rules if they buy and they really shouldn't buy and they're really con confused on why, we, why we're telling them not to buy because the sense of humor doesn't really translate, I guess. Mm -hmm. But it's really, it's really funny to see how the community reacted to that line, don't buy meme. It's funny how when you tell someone not to do something, people 
have this urge to do it more. So yeah, I guess that works in your favor. But I remember in the early days, it was sort of known as uh, the, gener the generator. And then at some point you have this, you took on the meme, the symbol, and then the whole thing became a meme project. So how did that name shift from the generator to meme? Yeah, early on, yeah, you're right. The original, the original tweet that I had made, uh, it referenced this fictional product that I came up with called the Degenerator. So it's Degenerator uh, that made fun of, of Degens and DeFi. And um, that was the original like the inspiration for me to create this Telegram group. And even to this day, the, the, the URL for the, the Telegram group is the Degenerator. And um, so that was really my intention. It was like, okay, let's, this product probably will exist at some point. I designed it, let's go build it. I just thought that would be the next step. I thought we, we would have some fun. Really the, the idea of the, the, the degenerator would be just like a point and click kind of interface for launching DeFi protocols. And the line was, you know, launch, deploy a, a DeFi protocol in under five minutes. So it was really just click a couple buttons, hit deploy, and then now you have a, uh, a DeFi protocol and it was that was kind of the joke and that led to uh, the telegram group and a lot of people were chatting and like is that the brand is this the name of the community is it degenerator or is it something weird is something different we had now you know an hour or two into this into the life of the community we had people in the community that weren't aware of the joke weren't aware yeah. of the original tweet or they didn't have the context or they weren't DeFi geeks like we were in the beginning. Um, so it was like, well, if we want to kind of cast a wider net and be a little bit more accessible, uh, we should probably like degenerate it only works if you get the joke. So let's back it off a little bit. Let's, we, you know, we needed a, we, we needed a call sign we need a tickle ticker symbol, ticker symbol. We needed a, uh, four letters to use in our, in our token. And the quick, the easiest thing, instead of like degenerator, it was just like, let's just do meme. We're, we're, we're just a meme group. So we went with meme and then used the pineapple from my original design. Mm -hmm. So in, in creating this Twitter joke, I just happened to put the icon or the emoji of the pineapple. So that mm -hmm. kind of carried through all of the branding. Even to this day, we use the pineapple as our brand. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another little Easter egg. But yeah, that's kind of how it morphed from like, well, the degenerate doesn't work for a wider audience. Let's pivot to the meme mm -hmm. um, brand. And then when we were deciding what product to build, mm -hmm. um, it was a toss up. Everybody had a bunch of different ideas and it was like, well, do we build something? Do we actually go build the degenerator? Which yep. I was going to ask you a bit. Yeah. And then it was, well, that, that could be cool. Um, but that's, it's really, it's very niche. It's not a very wide audience. We have mm -hmm. like all these consumers in, in the community. Let's do something that just like kicks it up a notch. So that's how uh, the thought process went about. Like you, instead of building something purely for the crypto DGENs, which was the point and click tool, which helps to launch more scams in the crypto space, you guys decided to go and build something more mainstream. And that's how like the NFT idea and all came about or Exactly. Yeah, I want to do something a little bit more mainstream, something that had a little bit more legs that uh, could, could take off. Yeah. I mean, you guys were quite innovative in having your meme community token stake to grow pineapples. And then these pineapples are then used to redeem NFT, uh, limited edition NFT trading cards. Like, um, so was that one of the only idea? Or I, I suppose you have a few different ideas. Were they similar in nature or, or, or very different? Yeah, quickly after, after in the early on in the discussions, it was like uh, once we decided that we wanted to go into this NFT world, it was like, well, yield farming is big, and it's been a couple months now. But like, if you think way back that far, uh, it's, it was an eternity in DeFi terms, right? But um, this was before this was mid August, so this was before sushi, if you can believe it or not. Oh this wow. <laughs> Or like the the food coin wars, right? It sounds crazy to believe, um, which is I think like the pineapple was one of the after yam. It was really one of the next uh, next food uh, emoji projects where I think we were we helped to kind of kick that off. But um, 
it was like yield farming was huge. Wi-Fi was like at 30 or 40 K at the time. Right. So that was pumping. Uh, we, we, we knew we wanted to do something in yield farming, uh, cause that's like the degen nature that we wanted to tap into and NFTs were also pretty hot. Right. And we thought, well, can we, can we merge the two? Can we do like, can you farm for NFTs? And that was really, that was it. Can, can we, yes, we can merge the two. Okay. We can find some ways where we can do both farming and NFTs. Um, and then let's, let's go do it. We had a bunch of different ideas. What if you take the NFT and you mint another token and that token's the governance token, or what if, um, you know, we're, you're minting right now, it's very straightforward, right? You lock up your meme tokens or your LP tokens, you earn pineapples, as you said, and then you, then you're able to mint these NFTs. But for a while we, we had like, that was our first prototype 10 days after the tweet we had, we had this protocol live on mainnet so it happened all really fast and that was like our first mvp or our first experimentation uh the thought in the back of our minds was we're going to let put that in the market see how it does and then build something else see how it does almost like like a hackathon Mm -hmm. format where you spend a weekend building something and then it might be done unless it really takes off but we thought we might build a couple different things behind it turned out that this first version uh the the you know, almost like mining for NFTs that kind of struck a chord with people and it started to get a lot of traction and really people were really into it. it started like it, the art was great. So that led to it a lot. Uh, the token price kept going up. So it was yep. like a lot of people were, were interested in this thing. So it was like, Hey, instead of going and building these other things that these other ideas that we had, let's double down on that. Mm-hmm. So that why that, that's why we kind of kept pushing that forward. And were you guys the first to kind of uh, do farming to receive NFT tokens in return? Or were there other projects that did this before this? Uh, no, I, I claim that we were the pioneer. We nice. were the first to do this. I've talked to some people since that said they were working on something while we were launching or they had the idea. We just beat them to it. There are a couple projects that have since launched. Most of them are clones of, mm-hmm. of a meme project. Um, but so, yeah, I, we were the first to kind of okay. deposit a token or LP token and mint NFTs. And, and, and you guys chose, like, I mean, each person can stake a maximum of five meme at any one point in time. And, and um, I guess there must be a reason for doing such a thing. Uh, why, why do you set a maximum of five meme stake at any one point in time? And, and why do you use pineapples as intermediary instead of just redeeming it for the cards directly? And I guess... I think the pineapples are not transferable, but like maybe you can share a little bit more insights on the, the decisions that you made. Yeah, great, great point. Just so you had to walk it back, you stake your meme tokens, you're limited to five, and then you earn pineapple points, and then you're able to mint the NFTs with the pineapple points that you earn. So you're right, the original dis- direction, and again, this all happened 10 days after the idea, right? Um, so a lot of our decisions were, where can we, optimize where can we be efficient if we had months to build this thing we would have done something differently right we would have had we may have made the, the pineapples tokens and we might have done uh several different pools and we, but because we were limited to time and resources and we wanted to get something out quick and prove that we're onto something uh we we made decisions that um in a sense kind of helped us and hurt us at the same time uh the the five thing was really just about you know, a limit of five, a ceiling of five, you can't stake more than five per wallet. That was out of intention of like, we didn't want the whales to just come in and mint up all the NFTs. That wouldn't be fun for everybody. Mm -hmm. So it was intentionally limiting uh, the amount per wallet. Yeah, you can create multiple wallets and go through the hassle of doing that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it just works itself out. And then at the time we had a minimum of one, um, we have since in new pools, we've removed the minimum of one, but we've kept the maximum at five just because we want to make it a little bit more fun for the average guy, right? You shouldn't be competing with whales. Um, but yeah, these were like early decisions where we just had to make the call. Um, and you're, and you're right. Per, now we have several pools, right? We have the Genesis pool and the Genesis LP pool. We've got various artist pools and the pineapple points that you earn are limited to just that pool. 
you can't transfer pineapples for better or worse. The reason, again, the reason why that is the case is because like if we had an extra week of development time, we, we might have made those ERC 20s where, yeah. where then they're tokens themselves. But because we just wanted to get to the next step, get it out there, um, that that's why they're they're really just points on a contract. It's just a just a it's all on chain, but okay. it's just in a smart contract kind of ticking up with every okay. block. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not not centralized at all. Uh, however, one thing that I've found interesting is that that actually prohibits by launching a new pool and not letting people move move their pineapple points. It's it's better for the new user yep. because if I'm a brand new user coming to this platform, I I put my money into a pool. Well, now I'm competing with everyone who's been staking in a previous pool, have earned all these NFTs, and then they move their or sorry, er, earned all these pineapple points, and then they move their points to a brand new contract. So, so really, it's just every new pool, everyone starts at the same level. Yep. Um, so it's just, it's there to just help out the little guy. Yeah. I, I, for new for users that have been there and they have these these pineapples that sometimes can go unused if they miss out on minting an NFT. So there is there is a plan for future uh, for future updates that would allow the user to roll over their their pineapple points to a new pool. We're still working out the details there, mm -hmm. but we, we do have in mind products that will uh, will address that concern. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think what you guys did with the maximum of five meme per address is uh, it's good because as you said, it prohibits the whales and and it, it builds this culture where it's a very community grounds uh, from bottoms up approach where people feel, feel that they are fair, they have a fair chance of playing um, and 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 participating in it. Otherwise, it's just a whale community. And, and we know what happens with whales. They come in at the start, they farm, and then they dump it all, and then they leave the community, and you guys are, are there. So, um, I mean, one of my, my other thoughts as well, and it's something that we haven't seen in DeFi, you know, is that um, there's a, this, a lot of this mercenary farming that's going around where people come in for a short time, they mine, and then they leave. Um, it does, there's no reward, there's no incentive for staying in the community for a longer period of time. So I'm just wondering if this is something that you guys are thinking as well. Do you, for example, factor in an age factor for, for rewarding communities who have, uh, people who have stayed for a longer time in the meme pools, for example? Um, yeah, what's your take on that? Yeah, you're right. We, uh, on one hand, we do want to be very ex accessible to new users, but we also want to treat our, you know, our loyal uh, users, those that have been around for a while, we want to treat them well too. So we're doing things like, um, you know, drops and NFTs and new pools that favor the whale as well. So stay tuned for new pools, but uh, to existing pools, like we'll, we'll put some art in there that, you know, the minimum is like 150 pineapples and there may be only 10 uh, NFTs to, to be created like the new user isn't going to be able mm. to hit that. It's only users that have been in there a while. Uh, and we may, you know, just, we're still kind of moving the levers and changing some of the variables. And we want to, we want to find that sweet spot in between like new user adoption and like, and like uh, kind of paying dividends, so to speak, mm -hmm. to the mm -hmm. existing whales and mm -hmm. those that have been playing the game for a while. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, I like I like the multiplier. The longer you've been in there, that's super interesting. Uh, I think we're going to see some things like that. Those that have been around, um, and you can always kind of tie back into the NFT itself, right? Mm -hmm. Anyone who's holding an NFT, any particular NFT, will will create a new. You know, imagine a new pool where you don't lock up meme tokens. You you deposit your your NFT, your rare Vitalik yeah. or whatever. Uh, so it really benefits those that have been playing since the beginning when we first launched that that card yep. uh, or yeah so you so you can think of things that like other campaigns and other mechanisms that benefit someone who's been here a while mm -hmm. and what can you do with these uh, nft trading cards that you guys are giving out are you guys planning to for example launch a collectible trading card game or what can you do with this i mean it's all a collectible at this point in time but do you see any potential use cases in these nfts that you guys plan to uh, put out so far 
Yeah, you're right. For now, it's a collectible, and they they actually sell on OpenSea and other markets. They they do pretty well. Uh, the secondary sales is pretty well. So if all you saw was this way, it's almost yield farming with extra steps, right? Cause you, uh, you, you, you create the NFT, you go to OpenSea and you sell it. So in a sense, like the APY for, for some of our users is very competitive, um, very in interesting for some of those guys. But if you're a collector, like it's just, just in general, you can prove like some of these cards, there are only 10 exist. So you can prove to your friends that, hey, there's only 10 of these things. But yeah, with, with the Genesis set in particular, it's clear that it has like the early stages of a trading card game, right? We have a wild card, we have these relics, we have various degrees of these cards. It starts to get into like this Pokemon feel, right? In addition to just collecting. Um, and that's certainly heading in that direction. Uh, we see the future is like, we've got a million ideas. A lot of the community members have a bunch of different cool ideas that where we could go next. I think it's, I think this trading card game is, is a fabulous one. And I think we'll, we'll start inching closer to that. Um, one other cool thing, and there's many, there's many different directions that this can go but we're experimenting with other artists and other brands and um, working with different mechanisms in the NFT themselves. Uh, you know, we just launched the coin, coin artist in our Genesis collection. We launched coin artist cards, both common, rare and legendary. Mm -hmm. Imagine being able to take these cards and going into Neon District or going over the coin, uh, her NFT farming platform and using those so it's just a little bit of like, once the more we partner with some of these groups, you can then take these NFTs that you've minted on our platform and take them to other platforms. Yeah. Uh, another cool thing with like extra utility of these NFTs, we did a, we, we had a relationship uh, partnership a couple months back with uh, LA blockchain summit. And by owning one of these rare NFTs, it gave you access to exclusive events mm. in and around their conference. So you could um, attend a private Zoom chat or uh, access a VIP Telegram group during the conference. So again, we're, we're just kind of testing the waters with these different mm -hmm. like added value on top of these NFTs. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the selling points of NFTs, right? Because like it's supposed to kind of change the way gaming is done because in the traditional gaming market, it's all in-game uh, items that are sold by the company and it's only used in that particular game. And the idea of NFT was that these NFTs can be used across the various different open games across the internet, across the different protocol. But we don't, so far, I mean, this narrative has been going on for a few years now. We haven't seen any of this play out. Like the idea was you can take our crypto kitty and kind of play on some of the games. But the problem I see was a problem of incentive. Like everybody wants to sell their NFTs and they hope that the NFTs can be used on someone else's platform. But nobody wants to adopt someone else's NFT into your platform because it means you can't sell your NFT and you're, someone is benefiting by the sale of their NFT instead. So how do you see this problem being resolved? Like, because everybody wants to sell their own NFT and not someone else's NFT. Right, yeah. No, that's, that's a really good point. Because if you're, everyone talks about like a AAA game adopting NFTs, imagine like that's, it gets thrown around a lot. Imagine Fortnite and you're able to take one of your skins or, or one of your uh, gliders and you're able to turn it to an NFT and take it to another game. But why would other games want to import that? And why would, you know, so your point is very valid. I think it's going to, we're, it's not going to start there. It's going to start um, at smaller games and it'll work its way up to some of these larger, larger games, but there's, there are ways to build in incentives and that's, um, you know, with these, with these fees, with uh, some of these transactions where you could actually pay the, the, the destination game, so to speak, by moving NFTs in, into this platform, they may be able to get a piece of that. Um, and then you're able to do things in addition to just like buying and selling and trading, but you could start loaning out NFT assets. I can loan out my skin on some of these games. I really, I really think we're starting to scratch the surface and it, it, re, it requires like rebuilding like this game item economy. 
Uh, but we're, yeah, we're doing cool things with like Decentraland, right? You could, um, in the next couple of weeks, we'll launch a campaign, a joint project with Decentraland where you can uh, lock up meme tokens and mana tokens, and you can mint uh, kind of these exclusive uh, pineapple themed wearables. So you'll be able to get wearables for Decentraland um, and take from our platform, but then put them on your character, walk into Decentraland, and, every, and the only way everyone's going to see that these, this pineapple shirt, it's only available on the meme platform. Uh, so there's, you know, and, and that's for fun and it's cross branding, right? On the, the meme community, we're branding, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of promoting and marketing um, the Decentraland community and by people having pineapple shirts walking around the Decentraland community, they're promoting our brand. So it's kind of this cross partnership thing here. And we're really early on in like, how do we solve some of these problems and incentivize the whole, you know, both parties, I think we'll get there. It's just a matter of time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How do you see the intersection of NFT and DeFi moving forward in the coming few months? Yeah, this is the exciting stuff. I've been building on DeFi for as long as it's been a thing. Uh, I'm full-time Ethereum for three years now with consensus for a year and a half. And, and I've never been more excited to be a product builder in this space than I am now. Um, we're seeing so many crossovers from DeFi and NFTs. Uh, ours is a really good example where you're able to use the staking mechanism to, to generate NFTs. And what we found is that we're like engaging the community in a way that didn't exist before. Yeah, any any digital artist can go sell to a ETH whale, right? A, a whale collector and um, transact one-to-one, -one, right? But we've built something where uh, tapping into these DeFi primitives were able to generate interest and buzz and almost build a community from scratch for each of these artists. So there's a lot of, a lot of cool things happening there. There's so many different things that people are working on where they're able to uh, shard NFTs and you know shell, sell fractions of NFTs. You're able to lock up your NFT as collateral for a loan. That's really exciting. All of these things that like creates more liquidity and it's and we're even 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 our project is, I think, benefiting the entire community as we're doing things to experiment um, at this intersection. And the more more activity, the more liquidity, the more you can price some of these assets, right? Uh, where you're able to do things like take loans, where otherwise, you know, we don't know what these things are priced for. This crypto kitty sold a couple of years ago for one ETH. How much is it going to go for now? Mm -hmm. uh, we're we're able to like just create this data layer now too, which is really exciting. So yeah, everyone talks about like how, how uh, DeFi can like change the world of NFTs. And that's really cool. And I think that's like NFTs are going to help bridge the gap and bring on millions of users to DeFi. But as like someone who comes with the background of like product development within DeFi, I'm also thinking like, what can we take from the NFT side and bring that back over into DeFi? Mm -hmm. uh, so, so some cool things that we're seeing is like, you're able to wrap smart contract insurance, you know, um, you're able to take um, Nexus mutual insurance cover and you're able to wrap that in an NFT. And now it's easily tradable. There's a lot of things like that where they're almost like, making it easier, make it just improving the UX of DeFi and being able to transact in some of these financial tools um, mm -hmm. with the ease of just sending an NFT around. So you're, I, I think it's going to be, and again, we're just, I say, I say this all the time, we're just scratching the surface and it's really early, but I yeah. do think, I, I do think that NFTs are really just going to help bring DeFi to millions of users in the next couple of years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, but also I think that there's there is some issue with sending NFTs around. I mean, it's not the simplest item to send around in the wallets that you have. Like I remember the other day when I uh, I had a, a wallet with a private keys and I would try to send one of my crypto kitties around to another wallet. Like, that was one of the hardest thing for me to do because I, I couldn't use the, the, I had to import it into MetaMask. I, I don't know, it's a long, long, it wasn't the simplest thing. Like most wallets don't have native uh, ERCs, I mean, NFT support on their wallets. I mean, ERC20s are easily supported, but like NFTs are not the easiest thing to send around uh, or for some, in some age uh, cases. Um, but I also start seeing that there are interesting developments around such as 
uh, lately this year, I mean, they, people started doing rap crypto kitties, rap Genesis crypto kitties, rap virgin crypto kitties, which was very interesting to me. And, and I think that, uh, I think as we move along, this, as, we, as the NFT space mature, we start seeing more of these uh, rap NFTs coming out. And, and I think it's not hard to imagine that all these NFTs that have been generated from the, the meme project can be wrapped into a ERC-20 and then people can sort of have more liquidity for these NFTs instead of trying to sell them one piece on OpenSea. So yeah, just, just, just my thoughts. Yeah, I agree. Especially with, uh, with these NFTs where there's like a lot of um, supply out there. If you look at some of our relic cards, we're in thousands of supply. And yeah, you can imagine a situation where uh, you can turn, turn these into ERC-20s, easily go to Uniswap and now create a market for it. Um, or even some of the more rare cards where there's 10 or 100, like we discussed, you can, you can um, cut those into shards and then you're able to transact there. So there's some extra liquidity. Uh, you know, I know groups are working on NFT exchanges. Groups are working on um, uh, almost like a, like a Uniswap for NFTs. Like it's really exciting. Just in the next couple of months, we'll be able to almost bring a, a lot more you utility and liquidity to these these nfts mm -hmm. and, and how many of you guys are working on the projects in meme these days so you are a developer i, be, I believe you are obviously putting out a lot of code and uh, i guess there's a few other guys writing code for, for all these projects on meme right now yeah i'm a, i'm kind of leading the charge here as um I guess the uh, the quarterback of this of this project. I don't. I don't. I'm I, as a as a product manager by by trade. Um, you know, I'm responsible for kind of the overall success of the project. We have a couple engineers that are part of the team right now. It's still very community driven, community focused. There's no no real um, entity behind this thing. Uh, we're we're in the early stages of kind of creating some structure around this and mm -hmm. uh, spinning up a, an entity to handle some of these decisions to hire a team. So we're in the early stages of putting a team together, potentially seeking some funding for that. Uh, long term, long term would be put, creating a DAO, giving it back to the community, kind of putting protocol decisions back in the hand of the community. So we're right, we're right smack in the middle of like mm -hmm. figuring out the next step of, nice. of how to take a big step forward with these, uh, with, with the future of meme. Okay. So I guess last question, right? Before we close off, if someone's interested to follow and learn more about meme, uh, where can they do so? What's the best place to do so? Go to don'tbuymeme.com. Mm -hmm. uh, check us out on Twitter at don't buy meme. Um, just whatever you do, don't buy it. Uh, <laughs> Follow me on Twitter at Jordan Lyle, L-Y-A-L-L. -L. You could always just search for meme, hashtag don't buy meme, hashtag or dollar sign meme on Twitter. That's mm -hmm. that's pretty popular too. Yeah. Cool, man. Uh, it's been great talking to you about meme project. I learned a lot. Uh, interesting hearing the story in the early days and some of your plans uh, moving forward in the future. Yes, thanks for having me. That was a lot of fun. Great to walk walk back through some of those memories. That was fun. All right, cool. Thank you.